of Kasatu, that's the Congress of South African Trade Unions, will be holding nationwide protests marching against unemployment and the plight of the workers in South Africa. The march coincides with the release of the country's unemployment figures, with Stats SA reporting a marginal drop in unemployment to 27.1%. Cesar Pamela, the Kasatu spokesperson, is in studio to talk a little bit about this. Cesar, thanks so much for coming in. Thank you. So let's get to the, the crux of all of this. We're talking about this march is against unemployment. Perhaps yeah. you can talk to us a bit more. Yeah, look, uh, over the last couple of years, uh, we've been trying to work together with uh, our social partners to really deal with this unemployment question. We called for a job summit. The president gave us one last year. Unfortunately, uh, when we got to the job summit, we couldn't agree on a moratorium on retrenchments because we were complaining at the time to say, look, since 2012, uh, government gave the private sector uh, tax breaks. Corporate tax was reduced from 34% to 28%. Now we were saying to them, you do have these tax breaks. Don't you think it's fair that you actually work with all of us to put a moratorium? Let's look at the problems, find solutions. They refused uh, to sign the framework. And we went back to NetLeg. We tried to reopen uh, the debate again, but they rejected uh, us at NetLeg again. And then that's when we declared a dispute and mm -hmm. said, look, we think we've exhausted all of the uh, platforms available to us. Uh, now we're going to mobilize and take to the streets and, and make sure that uh, we send a message to both the private and the public sector that uh, we actually are unhappy with the status quo. Yesterday we saw some figures coming out from Stats SA basically stating, um, uh, from Stats SA saying that there is a small drop in unemployment. Um, is this a bit encouraging to you? No, not at all. Uh, in fact, uh, fourth quarter results are always misleading because uh, you are talking about the temporary workforce that is normally absorbed during the festive season. So you are going to see, when you see the first uh, quarter of the, uh, 2019, that, that uh, those jobs would have disappeared because most of those people were just temporarily employed over the festive season. But if, even if you were to look at that, it is still disappointing that uh, even during the festive season, uh, we could only uh, we could only afford to really absorb 0.4% uh, or, or percentage point. Uh, normally, we, we always do better than that. But this time around, uh, th th these numbers are still depressing. So for us, we strongly believe that uh, we need a, a, a state that a state that does have a plan. Currently, listening uh, to the president during the sauna. He still resorted to his comfort zone. He still believes that the private sector will fix this. But it hasn't done so for the last two decades. So we were wondering what is it that he thinks will change now? Because he has given them tax breaks. He has, uh, 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 for example, look at the mining chart. They were complaining about the mining chart. They were complaining about the previous cabinet. So the, the, the President Ramaphosa has given everything to them and they are yet to reciprocate any of his uh, efforts really and, and, and we do believe that uh, sooner or later something needs to be done. We, we look at different sectors that are going to be affected by this and um, perhaps you can shed a little bit more light as to where exactly um, the Casato affiliates are going to be striking. I'm reading that Donosa are actually coming to support you, they're also going on strike. This is the nurses' union basically saying that they're exceptionally unhappy in the health sector as well. Uh, I think their concerns is also on NHI and many other things. So these are nurses. I, I imagine contingency plans are made, particularly for nurses. But you know, where else? What else is going to be affected in South Africa? Look, uh, we're, we're targeting all the sectors of the economy because no one is immune now. Uh, a couple of years ago, it was unthinkable that that government would actually consider or start talking about retrenching in the public service. We know the issue of the public service has not been resolved because we invited them back to the PSCPC to say, come and explain to us what is this restructuring of the public service about? And they refused to come back to the PSCPC. So uh, you, you, you have a possibility that they are still going to attempt to retrench the 30,000 they were talking about in the public service. You look at the SOEs, most of the SOEs uh, are in dire straits. And their only solution really is to say, we're going to get rid of uh, the workforce as a way of trying to cut cost. Uh, no one is talking about the looting that has been taking place, uh, regaining the monies that have been looted. And you look at the private sector, uh, the last mining in Daba, not the, this one, the last mining in Daba in 2018, 
actually came out uh, very forcefully and clearly to say they are following the Chilean and Canadian model of mechanization. So they predicted that out of the 480,000 workers who currently work in, in the mining sector, by 2025, they hope that uh, they will only employ 65,000. Yeah. It tells you that uh, this job's bloodbath is really going to continue uh, uh, for the foreseeable future. So what we are arguing uh, against here is, is, is to say, why is this government is still uh, taking policies and is, is uh, oriented, uh, orienting its budget towards the private sector when the private sector is no longer interested in, 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 in hiring workers? It, they are exploring mechanization and automation. We should be having a budget that talk to small medium enterprises because they are the only ones still interested in hiring workers. Certainly they are, but I mean, you cannot stop government from wanting to move forward. I mean, we're, we're sitting on the fourth industrial revolution where things are going to be automated. Machines are coming in, robotics are coming in. This is inevitable, but perhaps what the conversation should be is the proper training and skills that ne are needed in this day and age. Perhaps that's where the problem comes in, is that the workers of this country do not have the right skills. Have you ever looked at that as an angle? Well, uh, we've been talking about that for the last two decades. Everyone has uh, acknowledged that, that uh, the South African workforce, to a certain extent, uh, is unskilled. But uh, the, 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 the latest report from uh, uh, Stellenbosch University actually was saying that because of that, uh, everyone is else abandoning the workers because of their lack of skills and just choosing to, to, to explore automation. In fact, we're predicting that in the next decade, they anticipate that 5.7 million uh, uh, jobs will be dislocated and those workers uh, will, will, will be left to their own devices. Now, what we are arguing here is that, look, we're not going to st uh, stop in the way of progress, but that progress needs to be managed. Your own policies as a government should speak to the fact that you have failed to reskill this workforce. And if, if you end up having a situation where you bring in mechanization and automation, then th there has to be a just transition. Mm -hmm. You can't just say those uh, wh 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 whose jobs are dislocated, hard luck to them. And then you throw them into the unemployment uh, scrap heap. So the argument we're making here is that we want to hear what is the plan. I mean, we do have the sitters that are, dis uh, are dysfunctional. We need to, to, to hear what is, is the plan to fix the sitters so that we can reskill the workforce. But just transition means that you are not going to do what you did with the IPPs, where you just wake up one day, you impose IPPs, and then you say, coal miners, truck drivers who deliver coal, look, tough luck to you, because now we're, we're moving on. Yeah. That is not how you actually uh, 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 implement policy, and yeah. that is what we are complaining about. So, again, I want to go back to sectors, because a lot of people are very concerned about what is going to happen today. I mean, you're telling me all provinces are involved, except for the Western Cape. That is because you're waiting for the budget that is going to be announced next week, Tuesday. The strike will take place next Tuesday there. Parents are worried. Do they send their kids to school? Are the teachers' unions being a part of this as well? Yes, the teachers' unions are part of this. Uh, the nurses are part of this. Look, uh, it is not the union's fault that uh, at the PS PSCPC level, uh, there's no minimum service level agreement that was signed. But we do honor uh, this at a workplace level, meaning that we always encourage uh, unions to leave uh, uh, some workers behind, especially those who work in uh, emergency wards, those who work in, in maternity wards, to say, look, th th those are the workers who should uh, stay behind, but everybody else, because we have been discussing the issue of minimum service level agreement since the 2007 strike. It's government that has uh, been refusing to sign that. So we have exhausted that process. So until they come back to the PSCPC, they uh, sign on the dotted line so that we all know yeah. how many of the workers do we leave behind, how many. Now, it will be up to the unions themselves, working with those who manage the health facilities to actually make that determination. So it's, it's something we need to determine. Yeah. I want to touch on ESCOM now because this is a, bit, a very big issue. We're in the midst of load shedding. We've got stage three that's happening today. There was a threat coming from, or, or not a threat, there was an accusation coming yesterday from the ANC saying that this is sabotaged by the union. Can you confirm or deny this? It's nonsense. It's nonsense. People who are desperate uh, because it's the year of the elections. We've been having this since 2008. The, the first load shedding actually started in 2008, and the report that came out was very clear that the ANC government took a conscious decision not to invest in infrastructure at the time because they were planning to privatize it anyway. 
1999, they adopted a document where ESCOM was one of the entities with telecom that were going to be privatized. So there is no secret uh, of the fact that they've been trying to privatize it uh, uh, for the last two decades. In fact, if you look at the mess that we're hearing about now at, 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 um, at these two power stations, it's got nothing to do with the unions. It's got everything to do with the uh, 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 wasteful management uh, 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 that has been taking place at ESCOM for Stories decades. Stories of seven generators tripping in one day? No, no, no. Uh, 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 if, if you make assertions without evidence, we'll dismiss them without evidence. We don't have to uh, prove uh, something that you, you, you yourself have not proved. Mm. They have made this uh, in a vacuum, so why should we be bothered by uh, trying to explain ourselves? Until such time they can present evidence, we'll only dismiss it as nonsense. Now, there's also a threat, and Kasatu have come out and said this, and, and, and some are dismissing this as an idle threat, that you are willing to leave the ANC and, and, and walk away from the alliance because of the fact of the unbundling of ESCOM. Is there truth to this? Will you follow through? No, actually, um, uh, we, we, we did have a discussion with the leadership of Gauteng because this issue was reported uh, to have come from the Gauteng uh, province. They did explain, look, uh, our relationship is not issue-based. For us to take such a decision, we will have to have a mandate from the workers. We're coming from a Congress. We don't have such a mandate. For us to take such a decision, we will have to call a special conference, a special Congress. What I think they were trying to uh, express was the fact that the unbundling of ESCOM has led to a substantial number of COSATU members, making it very clear that they are considering uh, 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 other options. They are not prepared to vote for the ANC. That is a sentiment that is growing by the day. It worries us because we do have a Congress resolution. We have endorsed that manifesto because we are comfortable with it. We were part of the drafters of that manifesto. But the unbundling of ESCOM was never a part of the manifesto. Uh, the consultation process is taking place after the decision has already been announced uh, by the president. So workers who are affected and who are going to be affected by this are not uh, actually missing their words. They are telling us to our faces yeah. to say, we're not going to vote for the ANC. So it's a sentiment that exists inside the COSATO membership base. But there is no discussion really because uh, uh, COSATO will... will will be thrown into a tailspin if it were to make such a reckless decision because then you leave other w workers who still feel strongly that the ANC uh, is, is still uh, is the solution going okay. forward. Siswe, um, I'm going to steal just a few seconds into the news because this is our top story in the news bulletin. Can you give us a little bit more detail about the march today, the logistics, where it starts um, in terms of, I know that you say that all sectors basically are going to be affected that have Kasatu uh, unions that are involved in it. Perhaps you can tell us some logistics and also the numbers you're expecting. No, um, uh, in Gauteng, uh, we'll start at uh, Mary Fitzgerald Square uh, around about 10 o'clock this morning and we are going to the Chamber of Mines because that is the sector that is already decimating jobs at an alarming rate. And then we'll also go to uh, the legislature uh, because they are the nearest uh, uh, representatives of the state. Uh, to hand over a memorandum and uh, making demands about the budget, but also making demands about the moratorium on retrenchments. And uh, look, uh, like I said, we've got uh, many of these matches all across the country. We expect, uh, 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 at least we, we, when we were talking about logistics, we were saying we expect to take out at least 300,000 workers out onto the pickets all across, and then another 300,000 to make sure that they actually withdraw their labor even if they do not participate because we were very much aware of some of the towns in the cities that wanted to participate but we were saying logistically it will not be possible for a federation to have strikes in all the towns and cities but uh, workers uh, we have told them uh, this is protected under section 77 of the lra you don't necessarily have to uh, travel long distances. We have experienced uh, accidents in Kwakwa, so we, we have long taken a, a decision not to, 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 to ferry workers over long distances. But a, any worker, uh, be it a COSA to member or not, you are welcome to actually stay at home today as a way of withdrawing your labor and sending a clear message uh, to the powers that be. Leave it there. Thank you very much for talking to us. Sizwe Sipamla, he is the spokesperson for Kasatu, talking to us about our top story in the news, which of course is that uh, nationwide strike, I talk nationwide strike, except for the Western Cape, where this is going to be happening. And all of this is with regard to issues of unemployment for South Africans. I know that Sakina has more on this top story of ours.